Shabbat Shalom. I just want to welcome everyone to the Sabbath Day Conference Call. This is Barbara, and I'm serving as your host today. And today we're having a group discussion here in our fellowship group. And uh, Catherine and Abby are going to be reading scripture, and others are going to be joining in. We're just going to go around the circle and kind of comment um, uh, this uh, YouTube, you may have already watched the YouTube about uh, what calendar did Yeshua use, but I thought today we could just kind of go over some of it and pause and um, just interject uh, what we've learned, or maybe there's newcomers here today that have a question. So, uh, well, what do you think? What calendar did Yeshua use? Did he use Saturday or did he use the calendar in the heavens? Well, um, I guess I can answer that at first, and then we'll go forward and see uh, um, what the proof is that we have proof here today, historical and biblical record. And, uh, yeah, the answer is he used the calendar that he gave Israel. And, uh, well, here's the scripture. Uh, Catherine, would you like to read about this? Psalms 19.1. The psalmist David recorded, The heavens declare the glory of Elohim, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Oh, yes. Uh, 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 Genesis. Thank uh, you. I'm go sorry. Right yes, please go right ahead. Okay, in Genesis 1, verse 14 through 18, it is found that the Creator put his calendar in the heaven. Can you enlarge that a little bit, Barbie? Then, uh, I don't think so. Okay, I'll stand up. <laughs> In Genesis 1, verse 14 to 18, it is found that the Creator put his calendar in the heavens. One can read it recorded in Scripture as it states, And Elohim said, Let light come to be in the expanse of the heaven to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, and it came to be so, and Elohim set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, and it came to be so. And Elohim made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And Elohim set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness and Elohim saw that it was good. Catherine, so, um, well, uh, so we saw in Psalms 19.1 that there is a calendar in the heavens. And in the beginning, uh, in examining Genesis 1.14, we found that the lights are for seasons and appointed times. And those two words have a very special meaning. The first word is oath in Hebrew, and it means a signal as a flag or beacon, monument, omen, prodigy, evidence, etc. Mark, miracle, sign, token. So uh, the, notice that the first word is not only just a normal sign, but it's a beacon uh, of something that's coming something to let us know something is coming. And the other word moed means seasons or appointed times in the scripture. So um, anybody have any comments about a beacon, that we have a beacon in the heavens, and it is the moon. It's like a signal um, for a lighthouse. If you've ever been uh, to a lighthouse, which I just was at St. Mark's in Florida a few weeks ago, and that lighthouse was very important to let all the ships know, you know, where when they were coming close to shore and everything, a warning or a signal when something's going to happen. So um, any comments, anybody, about that calendar in the heavens signaling our seasons and our Sabbaths, our feast days and our Sabbaths. Yeah. 
Give me a comment, Barb. Yeah, give me a comment or a question. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. I hear you. Go ahead, Jackie. Um, I'd like to say two things. The first thing is that, I mean, hallelujah, the amazing thing is is that it's there for everybody. Um, I'm in Alaska. My father is in South Africa. And one day I was asking him if they're doing anything for the full moon because, you know, people go cuckoo on the full moon. And he said to me, do you guys have a full moon there as well? (laughs) And it opened up this wonderful conversation where, yes, in the northern and the southern hemisphere, we have a full moon on the same time because it's not just for people that live in a specific place. It's for everybody. And um, I just wanted to also mention something. Uh, you know, the adversary obviously makes a mockery of everything to do with Yah. And uh, NASA used to be an underwater exploration um, organization. Um, and if anyone's gone down the rabbit hole about the underwater kingdom, um, they'll kind of know what I'm talking about. And then, of course, NASA, you know, made up space and made up the whole idea. And, of course, they're using their technology to put these signs in the sky. So they're realizing that people are looking up, you know, and they're, they're doing funny things all over Earth. I don't know if people have seen the pictures of what they're doing, of course, bringing in this whole alien invasion, which will probably come in the next couple of years when COVID gets boring. Um, so it's quite amazing that Yah's signs are, they're actually quite subtle. I mean, you do need to look for the moon given the cities and the light pollution that we suffer now and, and all that. And where I live, I'm so grateful that I have full access to the stars. So we started studying the stars and trying to work out what month we are based on the stars. And we see the moon most of the time. <laughs> um, but, but of course the sun is crazy here because we have daylight now for 16 hours a day. But, um, it's, it's amazing that it's accessible to everybody. And when people, a lot of people are against us, and I, know, I know everybody on this call has faced some persecution for looking at the moon, sun, and stars. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's accessible to everybody, and that is so beautiful. You know, the Bible is the most sold book, and it always has been the most distributed book throughout all time. And uh, the stars and the moon and the sun are available to everybody. And, of course, you know, they're talking about having a fake moon and blocking out the sun and these alien things in the sky and, and these weird lights and, and whatever, but nothing, nothing compares to his sun, moon, and stars. And we might not all be on the same page as far as biblical cosm- cosmology goes, but the fact of the matter is, is that it hasn't changed. It's been the same since the beginning, and it'll be the same till the end. And it's so amazing that, you know, I tell my friends who every once in a while are like, well, Jackie, where are we now? You know, and I'm like, you know, when in doubt, Wait for the full moon. <laughs> That's the easiest one, and start counting days from then. And no matter where you are, um, you'll know when there's a full moon because everybody knows <laughs> when there's a full moon. Uh, believers and unbelievers, it affects us all, you know. And hallelujah for him making it so beautiful. Um, I'm just, I'm in such awe of his creation and his knowledge and his wisdom and how little we know. Um, and it still just blows our mind. And it's so incredible that so many can't even wrap their mind around it. Um, so, uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jackie. Way up there in Alaska. And, uh, yeah, 16 hours of daytime uh, right now for you. But, yeah, uh, that is great. You know, the calendar in the heavens is accessible to everybody, no matter where we are. Uh, on this earth so the Heavenly Father he knows uh, the false calendars only use one beacon in the sky and that's the Sun but the Creator's calendar uses the Sun moon and I'm hearing you I think I'm hearing Diane <laughs> in your Haiti language. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? We'll go back here. Yeah, the uh, moon, uh, actually the word uh, month in the Bible, everywhere you see in the, if you're new to the call, and some of these things we're covering today are very basic. And if you see the word uh, month in the Bible, it originally always said moon. Uh, and the Hebrew word Kodesh means new moon. 
So any more comments about our calendar in the heavens? Great, Barb. I just want to add, you know, just relying on the sun is so unreliable. I mean, that's why those who do birthdays, your birthday never follows, never falls on the same day. Mother's Day never falls on the same day. And it's crazy that people haven't realized that, that there's no consistency in the Gregorian calendar. There's no consistency in just following one out of the three. So hopefully one day people will start to wake up and realize that they think we're floating, but really the Gregorian calendar is floating. It makes no sense. There's no consistency. And if Yah is nothing else, he is consistent. Well, that's right, yeah. If your birthday was uh, Tuesday last year, it's Wednesday this year, and it always moves around. The Gregorian calendar floats, but the Father's calendar it does not float. The Sabbaths are always on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and 29th. And 15 is always a full moon day. So uh, it's very consistent. Well, we're going to touch on prophecy. We're going to touch a little bit about some of the basics many of you know. But this is why we have this conference call and the YouTube channel and everything is to go over and to explain, be able to explain to family and friends and to hopefully get the word out to everybody about the calendar in the heavens that is accessible to everyone. Uh, like Jackie was just saying, way up there in Alaska or wherever you live in the world, we have the same moon. So prophecy exposes Satan's evil plans. Okay, well, it was already in prophecy. Um, let's see. Abby, do you want to read what uh, Satan said, Lucifer said, Isaiah 14 here? All right. It is absolutely monumental that one understands that the Creator's calendar uses the sun, moon, and stars for his time-keeping principles, or principles. Okay. It is recorded in Isaiah chapter 14, a very important passage that exposes Lucifer's attempt in the future to steal worship on a false calendar. Isaiah 14, beginning in verses 12 to 14, it is stated, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of Elohim. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. Abby, and we can't hear you real well. Uh, maybe uh, next time and get a little bit closer. But anyways, um, so uh, Lucifer says he's going to be like the Most High. And so any comments about that? Uh, he said he would uh, have his throne above the stars and above the heavens and sit on the mount of the congregation. Anybody have a comment about this already being in prophecy? Um, and it includes the Creator's calendar. So that uh, he knew about the calendar in the heavens, and he's well, like Jackie said right now. Um, they're trying to cover up the sun, moon, and covering everything up in the sky with all the chemtrails and all the harp and all the weather changes so that we can't see our signs in the heavens. And he's been trying to change the calendar since way back here. It was prophesied in Isaiah. Okay, and we know Yah's law is eternal. I'm going to go through some of these kind of. Well, Lucifer knew that the Creator... Yehovah had put his timepieces in the heavens to serve as a very important role to beacon his people as to his appointed times of worship. 
And so he knew the only way to steal worship w was by some other false means, such as a false religious system and a false calendar. And he knew that no man or he could ever tamper with ca the Creator's timepieces set in the heavens because our Master in the heavens, Jehovah, does not change. Uh, because he records that in Matthew 3, 6. He says, I am Jehovah that does not change. So, um, uh, anyways, uh, that is why he's trying to cover it up. And he has a false calendar called the Gregorian calendar. The Roman Gregorian calendar that's only been around since 1582. But any comments? about Lucifer wanting to tamper with the Creator's calendar? Or questions? Well, I think he's doing that right now, Barbie. I mean, like what Jackie said, I mean, he's covering up the skies to prevent us from even seeing the stars and the sun and the moon half the time. You know, we still have the odd sunny day here or there. Now, I know in Alaska, where she lives, you, she has a lot more sunny days than we do. But, you know, I think here where I live, and you can probably vouch for that, that, you know, we're lucky if we have two sunny days a week and the rest of the day. You know, yesterday here was a beautiful sunny day. And today it was cloudy most of the morning, and I look out now and it's sun and cloud. But, you know, it changes from day to day. So some days we don't have any sun for days and days and days. And if you're wanting to look at the stars or the sun or the moon, you can't see it. So he is playing He is playing with God's calendar in the sky. If people are not looking up, I mean, you know, most people are encouraged to live in cities. And if you are surrounded by buildings, you don't see the the, the phases of the moon either uh, either way, whether it's covered up with clouds or chemtrails or just by the situation where you live. Um, if people are in cities where there are tall buildings too. So, okay, well, let's go forward. We know that Isaiah 66, 23 says it'll come to pass from one new moon to another that everyone will come worship Yah on Sabbath and New Moon Days. So we know it's yet future. And we are familiar, everyone here, with the fourth commandment to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, which um, is very important. And you see here where um, the evil one tried to get rid of the fourth commandment but is still here with us. So now we're going to go to a uh, part of Yeshua. He came. He said he came to fulfill the law. Um, can you read this? Uh, it isn't done away with. Yeshua said he came to fulfill the law. Uh, Catherine in Matthew five seventeen through nineteen. You can read it out of your scriptures uh, if this is too small for you to read. It's Matthew five seventeen through nineteen. Okay, it is recorded in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 19, that the Messiah stated, Think not that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Messiah kept the Father's Sabbath, and he also kept the Creator's calendar. It is important to follow the Messiah today, and follow the Creator's calendar and not Lucifer's false calendar. Hallelujah. Yeah, okay. Any comments, anybody? Um, we'll go back to that. Um, you know, people say that all the law was done away with and the Sabbath was done away with and all these things. Uh, you know, we've heard it all in the churches and everything, but um, do you think he did away with his Sabbath? 
Now, I don't believe he did it. I don't believe the Sabbath was done away with. I um, I have heard that Sabbath was done away with whenever uh, he was crucified or when he would, uh, you know, when he was crucified. They say he was nailed to a cross. But anyway, um, no, the only thing that was done away with was the sacrifices. I think maybe a few other things, but... Um, no, he did come to fulfill the law, but um, th- you know the fact that his beacon in the sky has remained. I mean, so much has changed in this universe, but that's one thing that's been consistent. So I believe that proves itself right there. And also. Um the fact that the Ten Commandments are still going to be uh, followed for those people who obey Yah, like, you know, thou shall not steal, thou shall not do this and that. Well, the number four commandment is you remember it. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. So I don't think so, unless you want to get rid of all the commandments, then you can say that the Sabbath is done away. So the whole, what this whole study about today is, did he keep the calendar of Israel, or was there a Gregorian calendar hanging there in his place where he stayed? Is that the calendar he looked at? No, of course not. No, <laughs> yeah, of course not. So we're gonna. If you're new to the lunar Sabbath, just be patient. There's. I hope you watch the whole uh, YouTube that we did on this. We're just kind of going over it a little bit today, and we know that Daniel seven twenty five says that Lucifer will think to change times and laws, and. Uh, And also, Revelation 13.3, it's found that there will be those that wander after the beast. And it's possible that to wander after something may mean that they wander after a false calendar. And uh, will the majority of people be observing a false calendar that is put in place by the beast system? And we really are getting close to the end times here with New World Order and peace and the Catholic Pope going to be the man that makes peace and we don't know everything that's going to be happening but we do know there's already a false calendar set in place so okay let's go a little bit into the history so that if you're new to the creator's calendar you'll see how did this get changed if the calendar of Israel was in the heavens how did we get this other calendar that's on our wall. Um, Well, we're just going to go ahead and, um, well, here's a scripture um, from the Jewish Encyclopedia, uh, Volume 5, page 410, that says the Sabbath and new moon both periodically reoccurring in the course of the year The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was dependent on the lunar cycle. So um, even the Jewish people know they're keeping the wrong day on a Saturday on a Gregorian calendar, and it's recorded in their books and in their encyclopedias that Sabbath was originally dependent on the lunar cycle. So we have a lot of historical evidence, and we've done quite a few videos, uh, too, about the historical evidence. Um, Okay, so um, we're going to go forward here so we can go through some of these slides. A biblical month in Scripture. Well, first, did anybody have any comments about the Jewish people admitting that, uh, well, their count there in Encyclopedia says when the Sabbath originally was, but... They are keeping a, a Saturday Sabbath on a Gregorian calendar. So why is that? Uh, I, I was told by oh, I can't hear you. You're far away. Okay, hold on a second. 
That's better. I think I'm going to hear you now. Okay. Can you hear me better? Yeah, very good, Mrs. M. Okay. Um, so someone said to me that the Jewish, well, or the Israelites, I think she meant Israelites, but she said Jewish people got their moon, following the moon thing from when they went into captivity. In other words, they got it from the pagans. When they went to Babylon. Yeah. So that's, what, that's what she said to me. How did Adam and Eve I don't, and Abraham I don't and all of huh? us, how did, how did all of Adam and Eve and Abraham and all of Israel before they went into captivity, how did they keep Sabbath and feast days before they went into Babylon? Right. <laughs> yeah, those are some good questions to ask. Anybody have a comment for uh, Mrs. M because uh, she's uh, trying to share with others? What do you say to people that say that they learned about the lunar calendar when they went into captivity in Babylon? Yeah, I, well, what I said was um, this this um, thing that you just quoted right now that um, that contradicts what their sources are saying, but she says she's already studied that whole thing. And <laughs> Sorry, if I may interject, I mean, that could be true. They could have learned the lunar calendar then. I mean, the Muslim people follow the lunar calendar. The Gregorian is the solar calendar. Our calendar is the luminaries. It's the moon, the sun, and the stars. So that could very well be true. I mean, who knows? But we, we cannot just take. Oh, you mean the like they started following the crescent, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I, mean, I, would, I would just really focus on Genesis 1 4 and the fourth commandment and really focus that it's all three. I mean, just like we can't just worship God or we can't just worship Jesus or we can't just worship the Holy Spirit. You know, like you, you can't just pick and choose. You can't worship Mary at all. <laughs> you know? So I would not maybe not even like nitpick on the lunar. Like I would just say, yes, you're right. The moon is a third of the process. Yeah. They did yeah, learn they, to uh, worship the crescent, or they went by the crescent moon after they came out of Babylon. Yes, that's right. Oh, okay. So maybe that's that's where the confusion is then. Right. Okay, well, let's go a little bit forward. I want to go into, well, we know the biblical month in Scripture is always, the Sabbaths are always on the 8th, 15th, and 22nd, and 29th, and you can see the phases were exactly seven days apart on the, on the week. You might have to mute, Martha. I'm hearing a little. Okay, sorry. And, uh, Marissa. And um, so they were one week they were seven days apart on the original calendars. So uh, the 8th announced the, is the Sabbath and the 15th and the 22nd and the 29th. So we're going to go forward because, uh, well, we know Abraham uh, kept all his commandments. Here it is, Genesis 26, 5. Uh, you want to read this one, um, Abby? Yes. Can you hear me? A little better, yes. All right. Um, do you want me to start from the top? Sure. From the beginning of creation down to the time of Abraham, the patriarchs kept the greater calendar. Note that before there ever was a Hebrew nation, Abraham kept the creator's commandments, statutes, and judgments. Yahuwah describes Abraham as keeping his requirements in Genesis 26, 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my law. Abraham is a rare example in scripture for before there was a difference between Hebrew and Gentile. Abraham honored the Creator's appointed times and kept His commandment. Today, the Creator should continue to be honored and His appointed times kept. 
Good. So there you have it. Abraham uh, kept the commandments, statutes, laws, and what calendar did he use? The Creator's calendar. Yeah, right. Okay, and we're going to go forward here because I want to go forward, yeah, to uh, how things got changed with the Roman calendar. Uh, we know that Yeshua kept his Father's commandments and he kept his appointed times, his new moons and Sabbaths. And nowhere is it found in the record books, the Bible, or history that Messiah ever kept a different timekeeping principle other than the Creator's calendar. The Creator's calendar was never a conflict between the Messiah and the Pharisees and Sadducees because he never uh, went into a debate with them about it. So we know that they were keeping the same calendar and uh, although there may have been other issues that caused conflict the creator's calendar was never one of them and at the time of Yeshua the eight-day Julian calendar was kept by the Romans but not by the Jews and uh, you can uh, go ahead and study that out but the Julian calendar started in 45 BC so it was around uh, at the time of Yeshua and so um, we're going to go forward here about the Passover. Yeshua fulfilled the Passover. And uh, we know he uh, was he died on the 14th day of the month. Maybe I can go back to that calendar. And then the Sabbath was the 15th and the 16th first fruits. I just want to skip forward here to... Um, how it got changed with Romanism, because I just want to touch on that a little bit before we close today so that it won't be too long of a study. But um, this is the final section in the history of the Creator's calendar, and in his, if this is found in history books that through Romanism many things were changed. Uh, the calendar of the Roman Republic was based on the lunar phases of the moon, and, but it was replaced by the Julian solar-only calendar introduced by Julius Caesar in 46 B.C. So Julius Caesar appointed Sogenes, an Alexandrian astronomer, to design and reform the Roman Republic calendar. And they decided to abandon the lunar calendar altogether. Uh, so the Julian calendar ignored new moon days and they instituted a calendar that was solar only with the days of the week designated by letters A through H. So they made a new calendar. They got rid of new moon days. So that was a big change then, and that was before Yeshua was here. And we know that Yeshua did not keep that calendar because uh, he kept the calendar of Israel, which was proven by the Passover dates that are recorded in the Bible. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and talk a little bit about Constantine, another uh, Roman uh, governor, uh, Constantine. Um, and I just guess, what's, uh, Catherine, would you just want to read this real quick for me? Thank you. Okay. In 321 A.D., Constantine changed the Julian calendar from an eight-day week to a seven-day planetary week. The Roman Gregorian calendar that is in place today is a modification of the Julian calendar. In October 1582, it was corrected by many days and promoted by Pope Gregory uh, the, thir yeah, the 13th. The Gregorian calendar of today is a deceptive solar-only calendar. Although the weeks are seven days long, it, it is nowhere near the true calendar. The Creator's calendar in Scripture is always calculated by the sun, moon, and stars. Hallelujah. So we've had some changes in 45 B.C., a Roman Julian calendar. In 321, Constantine changed the order of the week. And Gregory, Pope Gregory, changed it in 18, 1582. 
So um, we know uh, the evil one said he would change times and laws in Daniel 7.25. But here I want to get over to here. This is what happened. Um, it's important note that should be made about the planetary week that is in place today. Constantine changed the order of the planetary week to help the Jews adapt to Rome's new cycle. At the same time, he elevated Sunday to be a worship day. Saturday, which is Saturn's day, was the first day of the planetary week, and Sunday was the second day. So he moved Saturn day down to day seven so the Jews would have a seventh day to worship. And everything that was of Judaism, um, um, Constantine ordered that nobody could keep any of the Jewish Sabbaths or feast days. So he placed all their Sabbaths on a, uh, a calendar that he chose. And this uh, this explains it a little bit. Um, let's see, Catherine, do you want to just read a little bit about this uh, Roman calendar um, that I just read? I just explained it, but it, maybe you can read it. Okay. Um, Saturday or Dia Saturn, the day of Saturn, was the very first day of the week, not the seventh. As the god of agriculture, he can be seen in this preeminent position of importance, holding his symbol, a sickle. Next, on the second day of the planetary week, it is seen the sun god with rays of light emanating from his head. Sunday was originally the second day of the planetary week and was known as Dias Solus. And then it shows the calendar and underneath that it has this is the official roman calendar as found in a mosaic tile in the wall of the roman bathhouse called is it trajan's trajan's bath built in 104 a.d okay, well we'll pause here uh for some comments um anybody have any comments about saturn day which was day one of the week and now it's day seven as Saturn's day, Saturday. I bet they spell that a little differently, S-A-T-Y-R-N, for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, and they didn't leave it like Saturn. They took the... Uh, they left yeah. Sunday and Moon Day the same, but they kind of changed it so it doesn't look like Saturn day, does it? Yeah, and some of the spellings, um, you know, throughout the time and everything, some of the spellings have kind of changed anyway. But it's basically the same thing. It's um, uh, sun worship because they're named after the planetary gods. So what we went through is, um, well, we went through the Jewish Universal Encyclopedia saying that... Uh, the new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was dependent on the lunar cycle. And we went through a Roman calendar of the changes and the Constantinian calendar. And we're all the way back to uh, Gregorian calendar, which everybody has on their wall today. But uh, Saturday on the Gregorian calendar definitely was not the day that Yeshua worshipped. Uh, so, anyways, true or false, uh, who do you worship? Every individual must search out the scripture to see what is true and what is false. The Creator's calendar is true. In a world that is dominated by a false calendar system, uh, one must stand out and be a separate people, holy and true to the Creator. And that was in our Torah study today, to be a holy people, uh, set apart and um, to worship. Uh, and so that's what this is all about today on worship and what day to worship and what calendar to worship on and what calendar did Yeshua use to worship on. So any more comments? I'd like to hear from more of you before we close. <laughs>
what kind of started me on this um, truth about the creative calendar is really interesting because I was at work and my coworker and I were talking and she says, well, you a little bit of buzz in your background. I don't know why. Um, oh, I know. Oh, oh that's so better. Go ahead now. Okay. Well, my coworker simply asked, I would, I would, uh, I would believe in the Sabbath, but on what calendar do you base that on? She said, she just simply asked me that question. And instead instead of saying, well, can't you just see it? You know, Saturday is the seventh day. Instead of just saying that, I just it just kind of stopped me in my tracks. And I said, well, that, that is a good point. <laughs> That was just one simple question, and it started me on this on this path. I'm just so thankful to find you guys and the Father's calendar. Father, thank you, Father, for sending Mrs. M to your calendar and to this calendar study. We're so thankful. Anybody else have a comment? There might be somebody out there listening that would like to hear something that you have to say. It might encourage them. This is a big step to change from one calendar that we've known all our lives for over 400 years to starting to look at the calendar in the heavens. That's a, that's a big change for people. Well, I'm very thankful for everybody and for the testimonies that we did hear today and for the, everyone that's here. And I'm thankful. Thank you, uh, Catherine and uh, Abby, for reading and for everyone that commented. And I'm going to say what Joshua said, uh, Joshua 24:15. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve Jehovah. And I hope that this study is helpful to you if you're new to the calendar or maybe if you've been around the calendar a while, um, it will help you with some of the information. So I hope you go and watch uh, more of these studies. And for more information about the Creator's Calendar, go to our website, LunarSabbathDay.com. And if you want to come and be part of our fellowship group, we'd love to hear from you. There are many here today. You haven't heard from them. They're kind of sitting around on the sidelines. Um, but uh, well, you can go to the events page on the website, and you can scroll down. It will tell you our phone numbers and our Internet link to connect with us in the days that we're meeting. We try to meet every Sabbath and New Moon Day, yeah, willing. So I just am happy for everyone that's here today, and we're going to close this recording. And for those of us that are here, we're going to have a little fellowship time. So um, blessings to everybody.